uh, Commissioner Anderson will, will be able to join us. Great. All right, so um, I'd like to start by welcoming um, commissioners, members of the public to the Wednesday, June 2nd, 2021 meeting of the Santa Cruz LAFCO. Um, first item on our agenda is roll call. And so I'd like to ask the clerk to please call the roll. Yes, thank you, Chair Cummings. Commissioner Jim Anderson. Looks like Commissioner Anderson is, Jim Anderson is uh, currently absent, but we'll keep an eye to see if he, he joins us later on. Excellent, thank you, Chair. Commissioner Roger Anderson. I'm here. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Here. Chair Justin Cummings. Here. Commissioner Francisco Estrada. Good morning here. Good morning. Commissioner Zach Friend. And Mr. I believe, Serrano, I Mr. believe uh, Commissioner Zach Friend was saying he may not be able to attend today. Vice Chair Rochelle Lather. Present. Alternate Commissioner Ed Banks. Here. Alternate Commissioner Yvette Brooks. Alternate Commissioner John Hunt. Not here, keep going. And Alternate Commissioner Manu Koenig. Here. Excellent. For the record, we have a quorum. And it looks like Alternate Commissioner Manu Koenig, you will be in place of Commissioner Zach Friend for today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item up on our agenda is the executive officer's message. Uh, this is an opportunity for the executive officer to make brief announcements in the form of written report or verbal updates and may not require commissioner action. And so I'd like to ask uh, executive officer Joe Serrano if you could summarize the virtual meeting protocols at this time. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just as a reminder for the commission and for members of the public, we will be oh. conducting this meeting uh, virtually using Zoom webinar. Under this platform, the commissioners and staff will have full control over their webcams and microphones. Uh, all other webcams and microphones will be disabled. Members of the public will still have an opportunity to view, listen, and participate in today's meeting. Uh, for any individual that uh, is interested in providing comments on any agenda item, uh, they have an opportunity to send us an email in which we will read their comments on their behalf, or if they're joining us today, you can raise your hand on Zoom. For those joining us uh, via conference call, if you press star nine, your hand will be raised. Once staff and the chair acknowledge you, you'll have up to three minutes to address the commission on any agenda item. The commission clerk will inform you when you have one minute left and when your time is up. At that point, we will uh, disable your microphone. For any items that require commission action, uh, there will be a roll call vote uh, that will be administered by the commission clerk. And I do wanna take this opportunity to uh, inform the commission that it appears that the governor will be lifting restrictions um, uh, regarding the, you know, the, the shutdown we had uh, due to the pandemic by June 15th. So we may be able to have our next meeting which is scheduled for August 4th in person. Uh, staff will continue to inform the commission on these developments, but it seems like this may be our last uh, virtual meeting uh, at this time. But again, staff will inform the commission uh, with more information as it unfolds. Chair, uh, this is just an informational item. No action is required, uh, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I, I do see some hands raised, so I'm not sure if you wanna take these questions now. Yeah, we'll go ahead. Um and open it up to the public to see if any members of the public have questions about the virtual meeting process. And then we'll come back and if there's any commissioners that have questions, we can answer those questions at that time. 
Great. Uh, I do see a hand raised from Ms. Becky Steinrunner. Ms. Becky, you have been unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, this is Becky Steinbrunner. This is indeed good news. Um, many members of the public, including myself, have missed the personal interaction with commissions like yours and staff. And so I really welcome the opportunity again to have in-person meetings and assume that they will be again at the County Board of Supervisors Chambers and uh, look forward to that time. Thank you very much. Thank you. We also have one more hand raised uh, with the number ending in 0044. You've been asked to be unmuted. Hello. You hear me? This is John Hunt. Can you hear me? Oh, Commissioner Hunt. Hello. My internet was interrupted by a power outage last night, so I'm calling in. Okay. Well, I'll, I will uh, add you to, to the panel. Thank you for letting us know. Okay. Thanks very much. And Chair, All those right. were the only two comments. Great. Are there any questions or comments by commissioners on the virtual meeting process? Okay, seeing none, we will move on to our next agenda item, which is the adoption of the minutes from the last, uh, from the May 5th, 2021 regular LAFCO meeting. Are there any commissioners who have questions or comments on the meetings, on the, on the minutes? I'll move approval of the minutes. Second, Coonerty. Oh, I see our chairs is frozen, Commissioner Cummings. Let's give him a moment to see if he can uh, refresh. But we do have a motion and a second uh, to adopt the minutes. In that meeting. There we go. Uh, okay, Commissioner Cummings, can you hear? Um, I'd like to ask for a motion on the staff. <laughs> Seems like he's having some. I'm glad it's here. not me. <laughs> Mercury is in retrograde, you guys. <laughs> so I believe uh, our chair has, oh, Justin, can you hear us? You're currently muted. Hey, I could take over yeah. for him if he wants. <laughs> I'm good. Just in case, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> we've got, you, we've am, got a motion uh, in a second. <laughs> okay. All right, we'll turn it over to the clerk for the roll call vote. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, Commissioner Jim Anderson. Jim is, uh, Commissioner Jim Anderson is not here, Chris. Still not here, excellent. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Aye. Commissioner Francisco Estrada. Aye. Alternate Commissioner Manu Kony. Abstain. Vice Chair Rochelle Lather. Aye. And Chair Cummings. Aye. That motion passes unanimously with the exception of the abstain vote by Commissioner Kony. Great, thank you. Okay, next item on our agenda is oral communications. Oral communications is an opportunity for members of the public to address the commission on items that are not on the agenda. And I'd like to ask the executive officer if staff has received any comments or requests to address the commission on non-agendized items. Thank you, Chair. We have not received any uh, requests via email, but I do see a hand raised from Ms. Becky Steinbrenner. So I'll ask Ms. Becky to unmute herself. Ms. Becky, you have up to three minutes to address the commission. Good morning, commissioners. This is Becky Steinbrunner. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And again, good morning. 
I really want to uh, give a hearty thank you to um, Mr. Serrano for his involvement in um, watching over and providing information to Soquel Creek Water District as they are considering a rather sizable annexation in the southern area of their service district. Um, thank you for doing that. It's much appreciated to have your, your expertise there during the, the board's deliberations recently. So thank you for doing that. I also want to bring to the commission's attention that County Service Area 48, County Fire, um, is redoing the assessments, the special benefit assessments that were approved in January of 2020 to accommodate the very sad, <laughs> very sad loss of so many homes in the CZU fire area. The special benefit assessment was based on the benefit that those property owners would have of uh, having an additional firefighter on CAL FIRE engines and uh, now to protect their homes and now they have nothing there to protect. So I am glad to see this adjustment. I have asked for it to be done earlier. <laughs> um, unfortunately, these people had to pay the full amount last year. But I'm heartened that uh, the County General Services and County Fire are looking at a June 8th public hearing before the County Board of Supervisors to look at these adjustments. In reviewing the information, um, it, you have to go to the County Clerk, uh, board, Clerk of the Board's office to look at the binder. It's not available yet anyway. Um, I did see that there were some that had a zero assessment change and I was curious to see that one of those is um, the Nicene Mark State Park property, uh, which is state park and government is not exempt from these types of special assessment charges. So that is one question I will be bringing to County Fire and the Board of Supervisors at June 8th. But it is also curious to see that the calculations are not made public because it states on the cover there are advance. errors. Am I out of time? Good, how are you? Oh, uh, I couldn't hear you. Okay, oh, I don't want it. I don't want to overstep my time, but it well, says that there just, are yeah, errors. Notice, so I think there are two. The non-renewal notice references. Now your time policy. is up. Thanks, Mr. Time Runner. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, Thank then the one you received in the mail. I think there might be a commissioner who is speaking on the phone or we're getting some feedback from somebody speaking. So I, I, I've unmuted that, that microphone, Chair. Thank you. OK, are there any other members of the public who would like to uh, address the commission? And thank you, Ms. Steinbrenner, for your comments. Um, but is there any other member of the public who would like to address us at this time? Chair, I do not see any uh, other requests to address the commission at this time. Okay, move, with that, we'll move on to our next item, uh, public hearings. Uh, public hearing items require expanded public notification per provisions in state law, directives of the commission, or are those voluntarily placed by the executive officer to facilitate broader discussion? We have one item on public hearings for today, which is the final budget for fiscal year 2021-2022. The commission will consider the adoption of a final budget for the upcoming year. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to staff for a presentation on this item. Thank you, Chair. Good morning and commissioners. Uh, in April, the commission adopted the draft budget for the upcoming year and directed staff to distribute the draft budget to our funding agencies for their feedback. Staff did not receive any formal comments, complaints, or issues from our funding agencies and I believe the reason why we didn't get any comments is due to the fact that this LAFCO has done everything it can to maximize our funds while constantly looking for ways to reduce our expenses. As the chart shows on your screen, since 2019, the commission has analyzed every single expense except to legal services and data services, which has historically been provided by the county. Uh, it may be 
more, uh, it may be beneficial for staff to look into these two items in more detail to see if there are any cost savings or efficiencies in changing the status quo. It's important to note that while the budget amount has gone down over the last two years as part of our thorough review of each expense, our productivity has not been affected. So looking into these expenses may continue this overall efficiency. In the meantime, staff is recommending that the commission adopt the final budget by approving the attached resolution, authorize staff to coordinate with the Auditor Controller's Office to distribute the final budget and the apportionment amount to our funding agencies, and provide any additional direction to staff, including but not limited to analyzing those two services, legal and data services. With that, Chair, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions once you open and close public comments. And Chair, you're, you're currently muted. No Thank you. Um, are there any questions uh, from commissioners at this time? And um, if so, please raise your hand. And then after questions from commissioners, we'll open up to members of the public. Okay, I don't see any commissioners with questions, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to the public. Um, so if there's any members of the public who like to comment on the budget, uh, please press star nine on your phone to raise your hand and you will be acknowledged by our executive officer and allotted three minutes for comment. Thank you, Chair. We do have one request from Ms. Becky Steinmenner. Ms. Becky, I'll be unmuting you. You have up to three minutes to address the commission. Thank you. Good morning again. This is Becky Steinbrunner. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, again, I want to applaud your good work, Director Serrano, for um, being so careful with the public money and reviewing things with an eye of uh, fiscal responsibility and accountability and transparency. This is great work. And as a taxpayer, <laughs> I really appreciate it. And again, um, if anything, I see a much better, uh, more improved level of service that you and your new staff is providing, not, not to disparage what has happened in the past, but the fact that you are doing all of the sphere and service review reports yourself and they're so thorough and excellent, not having to pay a consultant to do them, speak so highly of your good character and your ability. And I just wanna thank you. So um, I'm, I'm very happy to see this actual reduction in the budget. <laughs> I would like to elect you for a higher office. <laughs> thank you very much. That concludes my comment. Thank you, Ms. Becky, I appreciate it. All right, are there any other members of the public who'd like to address the commission on this item? Chair, I do seeing not see none, any We'll bring it back. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I was gonna say that seeing none, we'll bring it back to the commission for any other questions, comments, action and deliberation. I'd just like to start by also um, extending my appreciation for the work that staff's been able to do to kind of look at um, expenditures and areas for cost savings to get us to the point where we are today. So very much appreciate it that you all are doing a great job keeping up with the work of LAFCO and helping us to reduce our expenses. Um, and and I, to your point of, of looking at um, data management and legal services, I think that it would be you know in our best interest to continue with looking at ways that we can become more efficient and save funds by looking at those two items as well. Um, are there any other questions or comments from uh, commissioners um, at this time? If not, I'd like to see if someone would be willing to move the um, staff's recommendations or items. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Yeah, I was just curious from Mr. Serrano, uh, a timeline for looking at some of these possible budgetary savings. Um, when would you be bringing something to the commission in terms of these items? So that's a great question, uh, Commissioner Anderson. Uh, if, if I get direction from the commission, I, I like to get started and in looking into more details on legal services and data services, getting an understanding of um, 
the type of the, the level of service that we're getting and comparing it to other potential vendors uh, and bringing that information to the commission uh, as part of um, the quarterly update that I provide the commission where we look at the budget. And uh, so I think if I get direction from the commission, I can get started. But I, I just wanted to discuss this with the commission before I, I looked into it in, in more detail. So to answer your question, uh, once if I get direction, I'll get started on this. And once I have additional information, I can provide it uh, within this year. That's my goal. I, I, it's, um, Chris and I are constantly looking for ways to be more efficient internally. And this is something that I wanted to discuss with the commission before I move any further. Uh, but I think this information can be presented to the commission uh, within this year. Okay, I, I'm kind of curious where, where you think there might be possible savings or increase in, in services, but this will come to us later and look forward to hearing that. Right, and, and one of my uh, concepts of, of internal efficiencies is looking at the status quo. And just because we've been doing it historically over the years, is that the best approach? Um, and I, I don't think we've done that analysis for legal services or data services. We just historically, we've, we've uh, been getting the services from the county. I'm not sure if there's benefits uh, or cost savings if having a, an outside uh, vendor to provide the same uh, level of service. That's why I wanna conduct this analysis. Uh, I, my conclusion might be that the county is our, our, our best vendor for these services. But I, I think if we do the research, then we'll have the facts and the commission can determine uh, how we conduct these services going forward. Thank you. That's fair. Are there any other questions or comments from commissioners? Okay, hearing none and seeing none, um, I'd like to see if one of the commissioners would be willing to move this item. I'll move I'll approval of this item. Second. Koenig. Okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Lather, seconded by Commissioner Koenig to move the staff recommendations on the 2021-2022 LAFCO budget. Are there any other comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, I'll move it to the clerk to, conduct, to, to do a roll call vote. Yes, thank you, Chair. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Um, aye. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Aye. Commissioner Francisco Estrada. Aye. Alternate Commissioner Manu Koenig. Aye. Vice Chair Rochelle Lather. Aye. Chair Justin Cummings. Aye. And for the record, this item passes, record, this item passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next item, uh, we're gonna move into other business. Uh, other business items involve administrative, budgetary, legislative, or personal matters, and may or may not be subject to public hearings. The first item on our other business is the CalPER side fund. At this time, the commission will consider approving an additional payment to LAFCO's side fund under CalPERS. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to staff for a presentation on this item. Thank you, Chair. In 2019, the commission created an additional lump sum payment schedule to pay off the balance in LAFCO side fund with CalPERS. This side fund was established by CalPERS for local agencies with a small number of employees. Uh, prior to this plan, our balance was over $103,000 and was scheduled to be paid off in 2036, which would be 15 years from now. Uh, under this plan, our current balance is approximately $81,000. And if we continue this plan, we will pay off the entire balance within three years. Therefore, staff is recommending that the commission approve the additional payment of $10,000 towards the side fund balance, which will be continuing uh, our efforts under this payment schedule. Chair, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions once you open and close public comments. All right, why don't we go ahead and uh... We'll see if there's any members of the public who would like to address the commission on this item. 
Chair, if so, I'm... please press star nine on your phone to raise your hand and the, uh, and, and you'll be given three minutes. Chair, we have one request from Ms. Becky Steinbrenner. Ms. Becky, you have been unmuted. You have three minutes to address the commission. Thank you. This is Becky Steinbrenner. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I am really happy to see this kind of action and um, I support it completely as a taxpayer. Um, I'm aware that the County Board of Supervisors has just had to take on $122 million debt to try to pay down um, the same CalPERS unfunded debt. And so taking this alternate route to um, then rather than going the side side account is a very good action. And I'm, I'm really glad to see you looking at this and taking such forward action. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Chair, I do, I do not see any other requests to address the commission at this time. Okay. With that, we'll bring it back to the commission for action and deliberation. Are there any commissioners who have questions on this item or comments at this time? Okay, I'll seeing the none, uh, look for a motion on the item. I'll move the recommended actions, Commissioner Koenig. Okay, we have a motion I'll by second. Commissioner Koenig. I'll seconded by Commissioner Lather to move the staff recommendation on the Calper side fund. Um, are there, with that, if there's no further comments from commissioners, uh, we'll go ahead and take the roll call vote. Yes, thank you, Chair Cummings. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Sorry, aye. Commissioner Francisco Estrada. Aye. Alternate Commissioner Manu Koenig. Aye. Vice Chair Rochelle Lather. Aye. Vice Chair Justin Cummings. Aye. For the record, this item passes unanimously. All right. Uh, moving on, we'll move on to our next item on other business, which is the educational workshops. The commission will consider approving the partnership between LAFCO and the California Special District Association to host educational workshops for local agencies facing financial constraints, limited staffing, or other challenges. With that, I'd like to turn it over to staff for presentation on this item. Thank you, Chair. As the commission knows, state law requires LAFCO to conduct service reviews for each city and special district every five years. These reports evaluate how the agencies operate and typically include some type of recommendation for areas of improvement. Uh, in, in other words, the service reviews are sort of like report cards for local agencies, but rather than wait every five years to analyze an agency to see if they're passing or failing, Staff believes that it may be more helpful if LAFCO offers our special districts tools to succeed or continuing this school theme, LAFCO can offer tutoring to the struggling agencies and advanced courses to our top districts. And the best tutor or resource in town is by far CSDA, the California Special Districts Association, which is the equivalent of Cal LAFCO for us. But unlike Cal LAFCO, all 58 LAFCOs are members, but most special districts in this county are not members of CSDA. And those who are struggling and or failing would benefit the most from CSDA. Reasons why districts are not members vary, but the most common response I've heard is lack of staff time or limited funds. That is why staff is proposing to bring the information and resources to them by co-hosting educational workshops with CSEA at no cost to the districts. These workshops will support the special districts during the challenging times. Uh, they'll utilize existing resources, address common issues, share collective knowledge, prevent and hopefully minimize flawed practices and just promote overall good governance. Uh, as the unofficial Dean of LAFCO High, 
I want our districts to succeed. I want to reflect their achievements in their service reviews. Therefore, staff is recommending that the commission approve this strategic partnership and direct staff to host a workshop in August and perhaps other workshops if desired. So chair, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions once you open and close public comments. Okay, I uh, will go ahead and open up the open up public comment. So if there are members of the public who would like to address the commission on this item, please press star nine on your phone. And after you've been unmuted, you'll be given three minutes. Chair, we do have one request from Ms. Becky Steinbrenner. Ms. Becky, uh, you have been unmuted. Good morning, this is Becky Steinbrenner. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I, I really appreciate this, this attitude. You want to give those who are struggling the help to help them su succeed. I, I thank you for doing this. I would also like to request that members of the public be allowed to uh, participate because there may be members of the public who are considering running for some of these commissions or boards. And while they may not be on that um, jurisdiction's governing agency at this time in August, if they're thinking about running, it would be a great opportunity for them to learn. And if elected, they would have that knowledge going into their, their public service. So I would like to request that the public be allowed to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Becky. That, uh, she raises a good point. I do wanna point out that this is a strategic partnership um, and CSDA, which we do have representatives with us today, Ms. Charlotte uh, Holyfield and Cassandra Strand, who, who can um, give us more information, but they, they will be the ones that will be actually hosting it. They'll be using their Zoom account for this August workshop. Um, so. I think that that's that, that's a valid point from Ms. Becky, uh, but I, I, again, CSDA is a California Association for Special Districts. Uh, the, the purpose is to help uh, the independent special districts in this county. Um, so I would I would need to discuss this with CSDA to see if that's even a, a, an option. Uh, but, but that doesn't uh, de deter us from doing other workshops that would be open to the public. I'm just not sure. I don't have the answer right now, but I, I think that's uh, that's something that should be considered. Great. Seeing no other members of the public who would like to address the commission on this item, I'll bring it back for um, comments, questions from commissioners and then action deliberation. Are there any commissioners who have questions or comments on this item at this time? Commissioner Roger Anderson. Yeah, I'm curious what the present dues are for CSDA and trying to cast a little bit of how this $1,200 fits in terms of what people actually pay to be a member of the organization. That's a, a great question, uh, Commissioner Anderson. I, I would defer to uh, Ms. Charlotte to give the actual price range, but I do wanna point out that CSDA did uh, un uh, introduce a new payment option, which is pay what you can. So there's some uh, agencies that have a small limited uh, budget. So they actually uh, allow the, the, the districts to pay a, a, a small fee uh, rather than uh, the more traditional uh, price range. But uh, again, I would defer to Ms. Charlotte if she's available to uh, answer your question in more detail. Yes, good morning, commissioners and, and Mr. Serrano, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Hello, good morning, Charlotte Hollifield, the California Special Districts Association, and thank you for uh, the time this morning on your agenda. We greatly appreciate it. To answer your question, um, Commissioner, the annual operating revenue dictates the membership dues uh, to CSDA. As Mr. Serrano was just describing, we have started a new program this year called the Pay What You Can program for districts with annual operating revenues less than $250,000, they can literally pay what they can. And this um, sometimes ranges from uh, 
a two digit figure to a three digit figure, it, it really is what the district can afford to pay and that gets them full CSDA membership through December of 2022. So we are really trying to bring those smaller districts with limited staff time and resources into the fold of CSDA so that they can get the resources, the trainings and the good governance focus that we have as do you to bring them up to speed on things like websites and um, the Brown Act and ethics trainings and all those things that special districts are required to do. So through that program, we are very much focusing um, on the smaller districts. We have had at least one in Santa Cruz County join under the program um, and others statewide. So I, I do hope that answers your question on the dues. Happy to answer any more that you might have. Thank you, Ms. Charlotte. Do I have to do my hand up? Yeah, but any other questions or comments? Um, I had one question related to Ms. Steinbrenner's comment. And so I was just curious, historically, well, I know that this is a new direction we're moving in, but with the workshops that have maybe been conducted in the past, um, are those open to the public or is it generally just the membership that signs up for those workshops? Who's speaking? I, I believe I heard your question, Chair. I know that there's been other workshops that LAFCOs have co-hosted that did allow public participation. Um, mm -hmm. This, uh, These workshops, uh, I, I really wanna tailor to these special districts, their board members and staff, because th this past year, as I've been conducting service reviews uh, and been uh, participating in the recent board meetings, I I've noticed that uh, some special districts uh, are not aware of the latest laws of, for example, requiring a, a website some don't have websites and there's some that don't have staff and their their boards are their board meetings are not being uh, conducted under the brown act so that's why i want these workshops to really tailor to the special district board members and staff to ensure that they're following the law uh, appropriately and complying with the statutory requirements so that's the purpose of these workshops um, that being said, if we conduct other workshops that may be tailored from more of the general public and just public agencies and governance in general, I think that would be an appropriate uh, opportunity for, for the public. But again, mm -hmm. the workshops that uh, CSDA and I are, are trying to um, host are, are really tailored to ensure that these districts are following the law. That's, that's the, the goal for, for these upcoming workshops. Great, thanks for the clarification, and, and that makes sense. I know the city just had a workshop on the Brown Act for all of its commissioners, and um, these types of workshops seem really appropriate and focused for these groups so that the individuals who are in these positions really understand, um, you know, the things that they need to do to operate legally and to be transparent with the public. So I appreciate um, that this is moving forward and the focus and also, you know, maybe at another point in time, there can be an opportunity for discussion or on other types of workshops, maybe to help educate people on, you know, what LAFCO is and what our roles are, and maybe for some of those other commissions as well. But this makes sense for um, the purpose of the discussion today. So thank you all. Um, I'll, I see uh, Vice Chair Lather uh, has her hand up. So go ahead, Vice Chair Lather. Thanks. It took me a while to find the hand button. Um, I highly recommend helping along all these districts because I do, um, I know that there's a lot of information. I've been in a special district some, in some way for the last 20 years and this California Special District Association and their, um, all of the resources that they have is very helpful. The other thing is, you know, having a workshop should be just the um, special districts because there's going to be a reluctance to ask questions if it involves more than just them. They need to be able to be open and ask the right, you know, questions that they have. And it just changes the whole dynamics if you have more, you know, outside public there. So um, those are my two points. Good point. All 
All right. Well, seeing uh, no further comments from commissioners, I'd like to see if uh, there might be a uh, commissioner who would like to move the item before us today. I'll make the motion for the item before us. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by Vice Chair Lather, seconded by Commissioner Koenig to move the staff recommendations. We're tag teaming. Uh, item, yeah, on the, the item of uh, educational workshops. And seeing no further questions or comments from commissioners, I'd like to turn it over to the clerks for roll call vote. Yes, thank you, Chair Cummings. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Aye. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Aye. Commissioner Francisco Estrada. Aye. Alternate Commissioner Manu Kony. Aye. Vice Chair Rochelle Lather. Aye. Chair Justin Cummings. Aye. And for the record, this item passes unanimously. All right, thank you very much. We'll move on to our next item, which is item number 6C on our agenda, UCSC Long Range Development Plan, LAFCO comment letter. The commission will consider a draft comment letter pertaining to the recent lawsuit between the city of Santa Cruz and UCSC regarding delivery of water and sewer services under the university's long range development plan. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to uh, our staff for a presentation on this item. Thank you, Chair. In February, the commission sent a letter to the university in regards to the draft environmental impact report for their long range development plan. As the map shows on your screen, let me zoom in. The majority of the proposed developments in their plan are located within the city of Santa Cruz. However, the commission did identify five development projects that are outside the city limits. Under state law, the city is required to receive LAFCO approval in order to deliver services to areas outside their jurisdiction. Uh, since our February letter, the university and the city have continued their lawsuit to determine whether the two existing agreements from the 1960s allow the city to provide water and sewer service to areas outside their jurisdiction without LAFCO approval. That is why staff has developed a supplemental letter to reiterate the statutory requirements under state law and clarify our position about the lawsuit. The primary focus of this letter is to reinforce the fact that if the city wants to provide services to areas outside its current limits, it must receive LAFCO approval. In this letter, we also reference a similar lawsuit that occurred in 2005 and the results of that court decision. We highlight the fact that the Regents, which oversees the universities, has gone through the LAFCO process before, most recently in Merced County for UC Merced and their long range development plan, which also had similar contractual agreements in place. And we also included our, in our, let me take that back. We also included our February letter to this comment letter as an attachment. Following distribution of the agenda packet, we did receive comments from members of the public, specifically emails from John Aird, Russell Wise, Doug Husky, and Don Stevens. These comments were shared with the commission and posted on the LAFCO website. Their comments did not reject LAFCO's information or findings, but rather suggested that we include more reference to LAFCO's water policy in our proposed letter. As a reminder, the February letter sent to the university did discuss our water policy and even included a copy of the policy as an attachment to that letter. I did want to point out that Don Stevens did have some valid corrections to our letter. Therefore, staff is recommending that the commission discuss and approve the draft comment letter with the following edits. Uh, on the first page of the letter, there's a sentence in the last paragraph uh, which states, the purpose of this letter is twofold. One, to reiterate LAFCO's position on providing extraterritorial services. Uh, staff is recommending that we edit that sentence to say, receiving municipal services from a public agency. And the second correction would be on page two. It's the first sentences on, on page two. And it states, as a result of the community 
community water decision and subsequent comprehensive settlement agreement, the university staff is recommending that we remove the uh, discussion about the water community discussion because the information is correct, but it's in the wrong order. The community water decision happened in 2011, but the comprehensive settlement agreement happened in 2008. So I think that it, the, the, the sentence needs to be revised. So I just wanna remove that. Uh, so, it, so it reads, as a result of the comprehensive settlement agreement, the university submitted uh, an application. So that's how the letters, the sentence should read. And staff is recommending that the commission uh, approve this letter with these edits. Chair, that concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions once you open and close public comments. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, I'd like to open it up to members of the public. If there are any members of the public who would like to comment on this item, please press star nine on your phone to raise your hand. Uh, once you've been unmuted, you'll be given three minutes to comment on this item. Chair, we do have three members of the public that wish to re, uh, provide comments. So we'll start with Ms. Becky Steinbrenner, then we'll go with Ms. Uh, Morgan Bostic, and then Don Stevens. So Ms. Becky, uh, we'll unmute your microphone. Good morning, this is Becky Steinbrenner. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, again, I wanna thank you for this excellent letter sent to UCSC regarding this issue. And my concern also is about the water. Um, in reading the, the LAFCO water policy, I, I do see regarding item number three, boundary changes. In cases where a basin is overdrafted or existing services are not sustainable, a boundary change proposal may be approved if there will be a net decrease in impacts on water resources. That I think will be a huge piece in moving forward with any annexation or boundary changes regarding UCSC. And I would hope that the university could come up with um, ways to be more sustainable in their, their growth and to create water sources within the campus whether it be fog collection or something like that. But um, this is a big piece of the annexation. Um, Congressman Panetta warned the County Board of Supervisors in 2019 at a special board meeting they had with elected officials at which he was uh, participating. He warned this the county and the city not to resist too hard this uh, growth at UCSC because it does not um, comport with the state's policies to allow expanded educational opportunities for everyone. And we all know the problem with the existing housing that the current level of UCSC attendance is to expand it bigger, we'll put more Becky pressure Steinbrenner. on housing. You have one minute left. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the warning. I appreciate that. So the issue for, for me is the water and um, the housing. And I look forward to LAFCO's careful and very thoughtful involvement in this process. And again, thank you for taking your active role and this excellent comment letter regarding the draft LRDP. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Becky. Thank you. Morgan Bostic, you're being requested to be unmuted. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, my name is Morgan Bostic. I'm a recent UC Santa Cruz graduate and the advocate for the Santa Cruz City County Task Force on UCSC Growth Plans, which is a working group of city and county elected officials that was formed in response to local ballot measure U, which was passed in 2018 by 77% of the voters and which contained specific policies to restrain UCSC growth and ensure the mitigation of all of its impacts. The task force would like to express their support of LAFCO's proposed additional comment letter on the recent lawsuit between UCSC and the city of Santa Cruz. As you know, the 2021 LRDP estimates that 43% of the proposed housing and 8% of the proposed academic and support space will be located outside of the municipal services boundary. 
Therefore, LAFCO will play a central role in determining the ability for UCSC to achieve their growth targets and to ensuring that our natural resources and public utilities are stewarded, are stewarded appropriately. The task force appreciates the formal clarification of the city and university's responsibilities uh, as they pursue the possibility of municipal services being delivered outside of existing boundaries. So thank you so much. Thank you. And now we have Mr. Don Stevens. Mr. Stevens, you have been unmuted. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I'd like to uh, draw your attention to uh, the closing remarks section of the letter uh, about which I commented extensively in my emails to you. And specifically the preliminary analysis that of the five development projects that LAFCO has done um, I'd like clarification on what kind of analysis you have done. I assume that it was based mostly on the draft environmental impact report. And uh, the analysis, uh, the obvious analysis that occurs to me is that the UCSC is estimating that it will re require 42 uh, million gallons a year of additional water to uh, provide services outside the service boundary. And to me, that says that that is a major issue. And LAFCO in this letter is saying that there likely may not be any major issues. Uh, that doesn't add up to me. And I think it would be best to eliminate that entire paragraph of the closing remarks. Because while on the one hand, LAFCO says uh, states that it wants to be perceived as a neutral party. On the other hand, it's saying, we don't think there's gonna be a problem. And it's obvious uh, from reading the draft EIR that there are numerous problems, number one being water, but also the fact that the university is not committing to housing uh, the additional uh, 8,500 students on campus and has not analyzed the impacts to the rest of the county of that many more students uh, perhaps choosing to live off campus and uh, pushing renters further and further out from the campus and impacting the entire housing situation for the county. So there are many reasons uh, that I think it's premature and unwarranted for LAFCO to suggest that there may not be uh, major issues in accordance with the act. Um, so that's uh, my concern and I'm hoping that the commissioners will direct staff to either edit that second paragraph of the closing remarks or eliminate it because I think the letter reads fine without it. It doesn't actually add any significant new information and in fact compromises LAFCO's uh, intention to be perceived as a neutral party. The only people this would possibly uh, please would be the university as far as I can tell. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Don. Uh, Chair, I do not see any other requests to address the commission at this time. I, I do wanna just respond back to uh, Mr. Steven's comments. Uh, first, I, I really appreciate uh, all the information that he provided in his email and, and letter. And, and he's correct, LAFCO uh, should be a neutral party uh, and uh, have an unbiased position on, uh, regarding the university's uh, plan and the city's efforts. The intent of this letter is to reinforce the fact that if any public agency, a city or special district wants to provide services outside its jurisdiction, it needs to go through the LAFCO process. And that's what we've outlined in the letter. Uh, I, I, I have done a preliminary analysis, meaning I've created uh, the map, I've looked at their their plan and I, I, the commission has indicated there are concerns. Uh, in our February letter, we identified possible solutions uh, that required, uh, that, well, that included annexation as one of the options. Now, if they submit an application, that is when staff does a thorough analysis. And that's when we look at all our policies and see, does the applicant whether it's the city or the university, fulfill the requirements under the Cortese Not Church Act, as well as the commission's policies, including the water policy. At that point is when LAFCO does 
uh, an extensive analysis. It's premature for LAFCO to determine whether or not this application would be approved or denied by the com with the commission. I, I, I have not done the analysis, but when I do the analysis, it's when I have an application in place. And that is regarding any application, not just one from the university or city. Uh, any boundary change application that I receive, that's when I conduct the analysis and make my determinations. So I just wanted to clarify that, but I do appreciate uh, Mr. Stevens' comments uh, throughout this process. It's been very helpful. I'm prepared, this is Ryan, I'm prepared to move the recommended action. Second. Okay, so we have a motion by, okay, so we have a motion by Commissioner Coonerty, seconded by Commissioner Koenig. Um, are there any other commissioners who'd like to um, make any comments at this point in time? Commissioner Anderson. Yeah, I am curious about, or not curious, I just have some strong feelings about this water thing. The, um, the Santa Cruz has recently gone to what I consider rather serious water restrictions. We're not paying for those yet, but we probably will. And I'd like to bring the commissioners back to basically 2014, when we had a water school for people that were using too much water we were a sort of poster child for the entire state of California and practically the entire country. There were articles in the Guardian at that time about what we were doing. And I'd like to point out that at that time, the water restriction was 10 units, which would have been approximately 7,500 gallons per month per, for a single family home. Now, the present recommendation is 3,700. So there's basically been a factor of two difference in the allocation. Now, the reason why I'm concerned about it, and I expect many other people will be as well, is that the, um, this appears now that we're going to have a, a water restriction approximately once a decade. I mean, I don't know that for sure. I don't think anyone does, but our question of water shortage is a serious one. And it's clear that it's maybe even more serious now that the, um, the city is proposing these really very strict uh, water uh, limitations. Now, there are many people that put in thousands of dollars into their gardens, for example, to try to cut the amount of water use. They eliminated turf, they put in drip irrigation, they put in mulch, they put in low water requiring um, plants. And so there's been a lot of efforts in this, and yet people are now continually to be cut down a little bit more. Now, in 2014, we were running about 30% of normal water uh, rainfall. And presently, I think we're above that. And it just seems to me rather strange that we would be this rather restrictive thing. Now, Water usage and new connections is clearly something that has to be carefully looked at. The university wants to grow by about 15, about 50%. Their water usage will probably grow approximately the same, and of which a lot of that is outside their water service area right now. So what we find is that the university will probably end up coming to, to LAFCO and we're gonna to have to make a decision. And I would like to see this letter modified, that last paragraph, to include reference to our water policies because it is obviously going to be very important. University has made the argument and they'll continue, I think, that they have wells, possible wells on campus to offset this. Um, I don't know how valid those arguments are. The document sent by Don Stevens is quite compelling. But I would very much like to make certain that we include the fact and basically a, a heads up that we are going to be looking at the general question of the um, uh, water policies with LAFCO. So I would like to amend this motion to include a, a addition of a sentence about the water policies. Chair, uh, this is okay, Jim. Do you mind if I address these comments briefly before we move on? Sure. Go just ahead. want to 
Yeah, I just, I appreciate uh, Commissioner Anderson bringing these up. Um, and I, I think it's something that LAFCO definitely will look into. However, for the scope of this letter is a little beyond the scope generally, because this letter is, is kind of aimed at, you know, projecting to the public, to the university, to the city, that we are advocating for a LAFCO process here. And if and when um, an agency submits an application to LAFCO, that's when we will uh, dig into our policies and do a full-throated analysis like the executive director just stated. Uh, if we begin putting in uh, certain policies uh, into this letter, it, it suggests that we're taking uh, a more uh, detailed view into the uh, into our analysis and into this uh, project. I think it's best from my perspective, and this is what I'm recommending, is that we, we refrain from discussing water policy in regards to the project at this point, since it's not necessarily agendized, but it is fair to bring it up because these were part of comments from the public, um, definitely a part of the concern for LAFCO in general. Uh, however, I think it's um, just from my perspective beyond the scope of, of the letter. Thank you. Uh, this is Ryan Coonerty. I appreciate Mr. Anderson's yeah. comments. Um, I'd say we, uh, I'm the, as the maker of the motion, I'm inclined to just leave it as is for right now. We have a long, torturous process ahead of us uh, where water will certainly be part of the uh, discussion. And so, um, but right now we're talking really about LAFCO's prerogative and jurisdiction in this area. And so I'm, I'm, I would just uh, urge us to move forward, get this letter um, to the university, and then we will we'll have a, a lot of discussions going forward about the substance of the university's growth plan. Commissioner Anderson, are there any other comments you'd like to make? Um, not really. I, I will vote against the motion for the reasons I've stated, but um, it certainly, I think that Commissioner Coonerty is correct. We will be talking about this in the future. And I would, uh, uh, and I assume that our water policies will come at that time. And um, I think I'd probably come down to most concerned about the statement that there's the word likely, not issue, major issues. And I think that is a, uh, um, perhaps should be struck that word likely and the fact that we would, might not have any problems with it. Okay. I, I um, So uh, for clarification, is that is the strike of that, is that an amendment? Commissioner Anderson. Uh, that would be a second amendment. Nothing happened to my first motion. So I'll, that, I'll, I'll accept that uh, the striking of the word likely as a friendly amendment. Okay. So, so I, that, and for the public's clarification, that's in the second. Oh. Sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Koenig. Uh, I was just saying that the, uh, the, the amendment is also acceptable to me as the seconder of the motion. Okay, and so for the public, that's in the uh, the last paragraph um, discussing whether um, the five development projects proposed are outside the city boundaries under the 2020 LRDP, uh, striking likely, and so it would state that it may not pose major issues in accordance with the act. And that friendly amendment was accepted by the maker of the motion, Commissioner Coonerty, and the seconder of the motion, Commissioner Koenig. And that friendly amendment was made by Commissioner Anderson. Uh, is there any further questions or comments from commissioners? Hearing none, uh, we'll turn it over to the clerk for the roll call vote. And I'll just state that uh, as has been stated, you know, this is gonna come back to us. And it's gonna be a pretty difficult process we're going through, but I do appreciate the uh, amendment because I was also concerned with the framing of likely when we're supposed to be taking a neutral stance. So um, I, I so thank you all for, for um, the amendments that were made. And I'd like to ask the clerk to call the roll call vote at this time. Yes, thank you, Chair Cummings. And it looks like we have Commissioner Jim Anderson in attendance uh, now. 
So he will be able to vote on this item. Thank you. Commissioner Jim Anderson. <clears throat> Mr. Anderson, you've been Anderson, unmuted. Can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Hi. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Roger Hi. Anderson. Commissioner Ryan Coonerty. Commissioner Francisco Estrada. Aye. Commissioner, alternate commissioner, Manu Koenig. Aye. Vice Chair Rochelle Lather. Aye. And Chair Justin Cummings. Aye. For the record, this item does pass unanimously. All right, thank you very much. Um, we'll be having many more discussions on this item for sure in the coming future. Um, the next item on our agenda is item number 6D, water consolidation effort update. The commission will receive a verbal update on the ongoing discussions between Scotts Valley and San Lorenzo Valley water districts regarding the possible exploration of consolidation. With that, I'd like to turn it over to the staff for a presentation. Thank you, Chair. Last month, I'm sorry, oh, there we go. Last month, this commission directed staff to provide an update on the water consolidation effort. Since then, staff continued to attend board meetings for both Scotts Valley and San Lorenzo Valley water districts. At their last board meeting, San Lorenzo Valley water district decided not to move forward with consolidation. Uh, they would like to focus on their ongoing issues at this time such as rebuilding from the CZU fire and determining how they're going to address Big Basin water. LAFCO will continue to work with both districts on other items as they continue to look, uh, look for ways to be more efficient. Uh, I do wanna extend my appreciation to Ms. Perrette Harmon and Mr. Rick Rogers from both districts for even considering consolidation and taking the time to evaluate the benefits of consolidation. Uh, they have provided information to their boards, but at this time, uh, they've decided not to move forward with consolidation, but uh, LAFCO will continue working with them closely. Chair, this is an informational item. No commission action is required, but I'd be happy to answer any questions once you open and close public comments. So, uh, Chair, you're muted. I'm not sure if you've, you're frozen. I do not see any requests from the public to address the commission on this item. Uh, I'm just giving a second for our chair to, to get back. And our vice chair is currently muted as well. I'm looking to see. Well, as we wait for our chair and vice chair, are there any questions from the commissioners? Well, for the time being, uh, either commissioner do you, either commissioner would like to uh, move forward with this item, or should we give a second for our chair to return? Why don't we move on and then come back when they do return? The rest are just informational, I believe. That's that's correct, uh, Commissioner Roger Anderson. Uh, the next items are are all informational. So if, if there's no uh, opposition, I'll just move forward to the next uh, item, which is written correspondence. Uh, we, uh, this past month, we received a number of written correspondence, mostly from Cal LAFCO. Um, there's no uh, item that uh, I need to go into detail, but I do wanna take this opportunity to inform the commission that your staff will be participating in a webinar next Monday, June 7th, uh, from 2.30 to 4 p.m. That webinar is gonna be focused on uh, finances 
It's going to teach LAFCO's uh, the difference between an audit, a budget, a CAFR, audit of financial statements. It, it'll also go over uh, the financial indicators that are available and how LAFCO can use all that information when conducting a service review. Uh, I think one of the reasons why your staff has been invited to be a guest speaker is because some LAFCOs uh, have extended their appreciation on the, the type of analysis that we conduct in our service review. So they want to learn uh, about our, our secret sauce or our, our, our tricks and our magics to, to get these service reviews completed. So I did want to inform the commission that registration is today. So if any of you are interested, uh, please let me know uh, today. It is free for the commissioners. Um, but again, this is just an informational item. No commission action is required and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I don't see any requests from the public uh, to address the commission at this on this item. I don't see any request from the commission to address this item. So if anyone opposes, uh, I will move forward. Commissioner Roger Anderson. Yeah, um, Executive Officer uh, Serrano. I'm curious what CalAFCO's uh, due structure, what modifications they made. I know there was some board discussion of that, but I, I'm curious if you can give us any details about the response to the uh, LAFCOs that, that voted against the, the dues um, uh, recommendation a year or so ago. Yeah, I, I know that that's an item that's uh, an ongoing discussion. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any um, new information to share with the commission at this time. I'm not sure where what the status is. I know that Cal LAFCO recently submitted the dues for this upcoming fiscal year which is consistent to what they've shown us this past year, but I don't know the situation right now about the future dues. Okay, thank you. We'll wait and see what we hear about that. And I'll make sure at our next meeting, I'll provide more information, Commissioner Anderson, because that's something that the commission should be uh, aware of. So I'll, I'll bring this item back. Thank you. I don't see any other requests from the commission? So again, this is an informational item. No request is, no, no action is required. So I will move forward to press articles. Uh, this is a you know regular item on our agenda. Staff has identified articles of interest for the commission. Uh, I don't have a presentation. This is just an informational item, but I'm happy to answer any questions uh, from the public or from the commissioners. I don't see any requests from the public to address uh, this item. Uh, are there any questions from the commissioners at this time? Seeing none, I'll move forward to our next item. This is an opportunity for the commissioners to uh, update us on any related items um, to discuss with the commission at this time. Uh, I know our vice chair, Rochelle Layler, uh, thank you for, for coming back. We're having some technical issues with our chair. So if you don't mind uh, uh, taking the lead. Back, I made it back as well. So. Oh, perfect. I was trying to be a one man show. Here, I was just glad that both of you are back. <laughs> so I was chair, trying coming. to keep it going. <laughs> Yeah, we, we just uh, went through uh, two items that were informational, so no commission action was required. We're currently on agenda item number nine. Um, so if you want to take the lead, that, that'd be great. Sure. Um, so if there's any commissioners who have um, other items of business that they would like to share, discuss, please raise your hand and, uh, and you'll, be, you'll have an opportunity to speak. Seeing no commissioners that would like to comment on this, uh, we can go ahead and move on to the next item, which is item number 10, legal counsel's report. Um, and this is an opportunity for our legal counsel to make brief announcements in the form of a written report or verbal update, and this may not require commission action. And so I'd like to turn it over to our legal counsel to see if there's any reports from, from them. Thank you, Chair. Nothing to report. Just a good morning to you all. And uh, one comment is that I liked the idea of LAFCO High. I thought uh, the executive director being dean of LAFCO High sounded pretty cool. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you. 
And thank you for those comments. All right, um, that is the last item on our agenda. So if there's a motion to adjourn, um, our next uh, LAFCO meeting will be in August. So commissioners will have the month of July off. And so I'd like to look for a motion to adjourn. Commissioner Anderson, oh, I, Roger Anderson. I wanted to know whether we have to come back to that question of consolidation uh, of the water districts. I don't think we finished that because you and Raquel sort of dropped off our radar here. So, okay, so I, I guess if it's okay with the commissioners, um, maybe uh, for the director, if you want to follow up in the comments made by Commissioner Anderson. Yes, I just provided a, a, a brief update to the commission about the water consolidation, water consolidation effort. Um, long story short, San Lorenzo Valley Water District decided not to move forward with consolidation, uh, which prevents the districts to, to explore this idea in, in more detail. The reasoning behind that was the San Lorenzo Valley Water District board members want to focus on rebuilding from the CZU fire and uh, addressing the concerns with Big Basin water. Uh, staff, staff is going to continue working with both districts, but at this time, uh, consolidation is off the table. Uh, this, there's no action required, but again, I'm happy to answer any questions from the commission. Okay. And so to, to Commissioner Anderson's point, this won't be coming back to the to LAFCO anytime soon. No, unless unless it's uh, initiated by either one of the districts and it seems like it's it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, that's unfortunate. All right. Any further questions or comments on this item? If not, we'll, uh, I'll look for a motion to adjourn the meeting. I move the adjournment. Okay, so we have a motion to adjourn by Commissioner Anderson. I wanna thank everyone for joining today. Thank all the members of the public who were able to join this meeting and look forward to seeing you all in August. Have a great summer break and we'll see you all in August. Take care. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, commissioners, appreciate it. Thank you, take care everyone. Ooh. Can't get out fast enough. <laughs> Take care.